When it comes to pre-emerge herbicides for corn, there are a lot of choices. And I mentioned to Brent, I don't know if we have time to cover all this. There's so many things to do. So let's do this. Let's eliminate the things that we wouldn't recommend right yep. away. Okay, so I want to start with anything containing atrazine. And you might say, wait a second, I'm using atrazine in my pre. I know, but I don't want you to. Roughly half of the pre's in the United States have some atrazine in it. Here's why I don't like it. It has nothing to do with agronomics. It has everything to do with the environment. We just don't want atrazine out there pre-emerge because almost all the atrazine that's ended up in groundwater has traced back to pre-emerge usage. So stop using it pre, instead use it post. That's literally all you have to do. If you take that atrazine out of your pre, put it into your post, you'll still get the weed control. Now you're much safer for the environment. Here's the other thing, Brian, is when I talk to farmers about atrazine premixes, I'll say, well, what rate of that product are you actually putting out? And they'll say, well, I can only get by with a half a pound or a pound of atrazine, so I got to cut the rate on it so I don't get the full rate of the group 15 that I'd like. Well, why would you put yourself in that spot? The group 15 is carrying all the weight and doing all the work out there. Why not just use the group 15 straight rather than being dependent okay. on that blend with atrazine? All right, so here's the first thing. If you're raising conventional corn, you have to have a full rate of a group 15 have to because you don't have any good option post-emerge or I should say cheap option post-emerge for grass control. You don't have Roundup available. You don't have Liberty available. You're stuck with Accent. I don't want to spend the money on Accent and I know you don't either. So just make sure you're using a full rate of a group 15. Now when you switch over to traded corn, most of it's Roundup ready corn in the United States that has a trait. All right, then you've got that Roundup post-emerge so that changes your thinking a little bit. So now you could get by with a little lower rate of a group 15 if you want to rescue with that Roundup on the grass. But the group 15s, by going with a full rate of one of those, you will get better water hemp control. You will get better pigweed control, better kochia control. I'm not saying dramatically better, but you will get better control of all those broadleaf weeds. So that's why we like the full rate of a group 15. Now, if you want to have that group 15 broadleaf component premix, you can certainly do that. I would say this, even in a situation where, hey, that's what I've been doing for years, I would try one field with that full rate of a group 15, not a cut rate, but a full rate, because you're going to be surprised how much activity you do have on some of those small seeded broadleaves, whether it's a pigweed species plant or lamb's quarters, you do get pretty good activity. Now, I won't say you get more activity than if you're putting in Sharpen or some of these other things that you can do when you get those combo products. All right, I mentioned already, don't use atrazine pre. The other one I don't like pre-emerge is the HPPDs, and here's why. If you go out there with something that has an HPPD, Callisto, Laudus, Impact, Armazon, any one of those active ingredients, you've got that in your pre-emerge herbicide. The problem now is you can't use it post, and I love using it post because it costs $3 an acre for the full rate. I like cheap, I like effective. Okay, so instead of using it pre, use something else pre. That's where we like Sharpen as a broadleaf killer. You could certainly go out there with the old Hornet. Triple Flex and Sure Start have the old Hornet. What that is, is Stinger and Python. Okay, I don't love ALS products pre-emerge either, but Python does have activity on some weeds still, so that's not bad, and having that Stinger out there is okay. Plus, I like Sure Start and Triple Flex because they're so cheap. Triple Flex and Sure Start have Harness or Surpass, whichever they're the same thing, plus the Stinger and the Python. When you go to Verdict, that's got Outlook plus the Sharpen. Now the problem, like Darren was mentioning, when you do Verdict or when you do Sure Start or Triple Flex, you are getting a cut rate of a Group 15. So if you want to use those products, our suggestion would be buy some straight Group 15 as well and bump the rate of the Group 15. That way you've done everything you can pre-emerge and you haven't burned up what you would like to use post-emerge, which is atrazine and HPPD. Here's the other thing. When you're using those products with a cut rate of Group 15 and some sort of broadleaf killer, you don't have as much residual. Now you're coming back with a Roundup or maybe Liberty treatment, which have no residual. Well, that makes no sense to me because you're gonna have all kinds of late season weed escapes. So what we're trying to do here is get enough residual herbicide out there that you get season long weed control. And the other big thing here is cost. We've got to ultimately look at cost. So that's where 
post emerge. If you burn up your HPPD pre, what are you left with post? Well, you still have Roundup. Maybe you have Liberty, depending on the corn you're raising. But is that going to kill your weeds? No. So no, now or, you say, or you have dicamba. And here's yeah. the problem that we ran into in 2020. There are a lot of areas of the country that were forced to spray a little bit later in their corn, and they also planted soybeans really early. So they were hitting flowering much earlier. We saw more so drift dicamba was drift issues that actually hurt yield. And it came out of the corn in many cases. Yep, so then a lot of people say, well, I'll use status. Well, that still has a little bit of dicamba in there. And yes, the main weed killers, diflufens, appear post-emerge, but you got some dicamba in there. So you're again left with that risk. So that's where we come back to don't use your HPPD and don't use your atrazine pre. If you save those and use those post-emerge, now you don't have to worry so much about drift. Okay, well, hold on here, because you talk about these HPPD pre's, and we're seeing many of them get marketed as products where you know what put half of it on up front put half of it on post well you could potentially do that but i want you to think about this if you use a half rate of anything is it as good as a full rate Usually it's no, not. No, but you're only wanting it to last a certain period of time. Yeah, but That's I'm talking post-emerge. So if you go with a half rate of Resicor pre and a half rate of Resicor post, well, how much ultimately HPVD did you put out there? Too much in a lot of cases. Okay, I don't want more than three ounces of Callisto out there. Otherwise, I'm worried about the carryover. And Callisto, by the way, the active ingredients means a tryout. So I still come back to, I don't like that. You can do it if you want to run a low rate pre, but now you're too low pre, you're too low post, and you may have some weed resistance that's starting to build. I don't want to do that. That would not be my recommendation. I also want to come back to, as mentioned in cost there, the reason why I like saving the atrazine and the HPPD post instead of having to spray status post is the status costs five or six times as much money as the HPPD. So if you want cheap, you want the cheapest and best program, I'm going with a group 15 plus either sharpen, stinger, python, something out there for broadleaves. Then post-emerge, I'm going to go HPPD, atrazine, Roundup. Well, That's how well, I would do it in a lot of cases. I'm not saying this fits in every situation, but it fits on probably 90% of the acres in the United States. Here's the other thing. you got to be realistic about what you're putting out there. If you've got that broadleaf killer in that product, great. That's going to burn down Wait, any broadleaf which product? In the pre or the post? In the pre. It's okay. going to burn down any of those broadleaves that are up, but you don't have anything in there to burn down the grass. So if you've got grass that's already emerging, you may need to put some Roundup in there too, just to make sure you kick it out of the way. Yep, unless it's a tillage situation. And that leads to my point why I want to get these pre's out there early. You're going to need moisture to activate any of the pre's that we're talking about. And yes, the broadleaf component and in those combination products can burn down broadleaves. But again, you got to get that grass before it starts coming. You need some moisture and you need time to get it out there. So if you're in a dry area, one of the biggest objections I hear from farmers is, well, my pre didn't work so good. And the problem is often you didn't put it out early enough. You thought you were in Illinois and you said, well, I can just plant and spray the stuff the same day. No problem. No, you can't. You got to get it out there a couple weeks ahead so you have time to get some rain to get it working. If you're in dry country, yes. If you are in Illinois, most of the time, it's going to work fine. <laughs> not if you, always. No, not most always. Most of the time, it's going to work if you spray the complaints, after you plant. Here's the complaints we get in areas that do normally get well, rain. Well, my pre didn't work. Well, guess what? If you have irrigation, you got to turn the pivot on, water that ground. Hey, you didn't get rain the first couple days? All right, better water it in okay. and get it going. Or and if you can't do that, you just can't get away with putting all your eggs in that basket of I'm going to plant and then I'm going to come back later right. what and you hope should I do. have time. If you want it to work with less moisture, you till it in. Till it in lightly. Don't disc it in, but till it in very lightly. And I realize a lot of companies will tell you, oh, don't till it in. They're just worried about streaking and they're worried about you burying it. So as long as you go light, you will have much better performance because now you're taking the herbicide from at the soil surface, putting it down where the weeds are. Now it takes very little rain to get that active. Otherwise, our next best suggestion after tillage is spray it out two weeks or four weeks before planting. Our final suggestion and the worst case scenario is yes, you can apply it after you've planted, but that is the riskiest situation because you got to have rain and you got to have it quickly. Here's the other tricky thing, Brian, is there's so many rebate programs out there and some yep. of them have big dollars or 0% financing offers where yep. it's kind of attractive to switch a pre this year. Yep, and the other thing is there are a lot of generics out there for many of these products. So you've got to weigh this all out and say, okay, if I buy the name brand and I get the rebate, how does that dollar out compared to the generic? Look at all these things, make sure you're asking your dealer 
about, well, what if it doesn't work? Is there any service policy after that? There isn't with the generics, there would be with the name brand. So just weigh those things out. But the number one thing that I wanted to tell you is we've got to be smart with our dollars and you got to look at which weeds will each of these herbicides control. So if the product you spend money on controls weeds that you don't have on your farm, who cares? You've spent the money on something that you didn't need. And there are plenty of companies out there that are just trying to sell you stuff because that's what they've got. That's why we're trying to help you understand, use a group 15, use Sharpen or Sting or Python, something like that along with that in a lot of cases, but keep that group 15 rate high. Then save your HPPD and atrazine post. Sure, you can always go with Status. Status is the very best product post to merge. It just, it costs a lot of money. So you want to save that for just the acres you need it and not burn up your HPPD pre. So now post to merge, you're stuck with either I got to spend all kinds of money on Status or I got to go with a high drift and high injury product in Dicamba. And you may want to have some great post-emerge options, especially if you have our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it, coming up next.